Legislative File Number 3872, which is a resolution of the Miami Historic and Stop. Environmental. Stop. I'm sorry? Well, okay, I'm sorry. Okay, let me start over. A resolution of the Miami Historic and Environmental Preservation Board recommending approval or denial of a proposed ordinance of the Miami City Commission incorporated herein as Exhibit A, amending Chapter 23 of the City Code of the City of Miami as amended, entitled Historic Preservation, <coughs> establishing a new Section 23-4.1 entitled Interim Protection Measures in NCD2 and NCD3 Neighborhood Conservation Districts in the manner and with the provisions provided for and with the limitations provided herein containing a severability clause and providing for an effective date. And we'll start with staff report, I guess. Okay. The Preservation Office is respectfully requesting the Historic and Environmental Preservation Board approve an amendment here to attached as Exhibit A to Chapter 23 of the City Code of the City of Miami as amended, entitled Historic Preservation, establishing provisions for interim protection measures in NCD2 and NCD3. Neighbourhood conservation districts are unique neighbourhoods of a distinctive character with many potential historic resources. The NCDs within the scope of the proposed amendment are referred to as NCD2, the West Grove and Charles Avenue, and NCD3, the Coconut Grove Neighbourhood Conservation District, as found in Appendix A of the Miami 21 Code. Possible historic resources in the NCD2 and NCD3 Neighbourhood Conservation Districts may fall prey to demolition or demolition by neglect as a precursor to actual physical demolition. In the interests of cataloguing, studying and possibly preserving potential historic resources which may be present in the NCD2 and NCD3 Neighbourhood Conservation Districts, the proposed amendment to Chapter 23 will allow the Historic Preservation Officer to determine during the period of the prescribed interim protection measures whether a property should be designated as a historic resource, in which case the property will be considered for designation by the Historic and Environmental Preservation Board. Pursuant to Section 62-28, the Historic and Environmental Preservation Board has the power, duty and authority to recommend text amendments to Chapter 23 of the City Code. Preservation staff recommends approval of the text amendment to Chapter 23 of the City Code as amended, entitled Historic Preservation, establishing provisions for interim protection measures in NCD2 and NCD3. Want to give us some more explanation on this? Can you walk us through this, please? Um, basically, it's sort of a similar thing to what I do now, anyway. Um, when demolition waivers are brought in from Coconut Grove, they pass across my desk so that I can have a look at them, basically, to determine if um, a property would be eligible for individual designation. Um, what we have found is that um, in some cases there may be a property which is being demolished which may be potentially a contributing property to a district but you know we're not going out there to create a district based on one property so this is really there so that the most significant properties that may be subject to a demolition order can actually be identified and if they meet the criteria brought to the board for potential designation. These are individual properties? The, as they come across the desk on, on, um, for a demolition then yes they would be individual properties. Is there anyone from the public who wishes to speak on this item? Uh, good evening. I'm Melissa Tapinas. I live at 3767 Carmen Court in uh, Coconut Grove. Um, I learned about this proposed legislation on Friday uh, when I reviewed the agenda. It affects Coconut Grove in its entirety. It's quite troubling that we're just learning about this. So I'd like to ask for a three-month deferral um, as we been hearing time and time again this evening process is an issue so I won't go into an abrasive combative kind of argument I think I, um, I think I would like to ask for a three-month 
uh, deferral so that we can meet and discuss this legislation because it seems to me like it's a, um, a bait and switch for a historic district. And if that's what it is, I think that um, there should be some notice to property owners. Um, and the fact that I'm the only person here because I happened to review the agenda on Friday um, is concerning. Are there people here? Excuse me? Looks like there's other people here. Excuse me? It looks like there are other people here. Yes. I think we so all you're not were the here. Only one. No, I made sure to make everyone know that I was here for number nine, and then I've been speaking to them about staying so we can get more time. Thank you. And I would point out that even if it is deferred, I will still be reviewing the demolition applications that come across my desk. And if I believe a property is eligible for individual designation, I will bring it to the board. Gentlemen, how are you? Uh, J.B. Diedrich, 3758 Row Avenue, uh, 3475 Hibiscus Street. Uh, we've just gone through all of this in uh, item three, right? I mean, how come we have to wait till item nine to discuss something that is so similar suddenly? I mean, I just found out right now. Uh, I think we should push it back. I mean, it's the only reasonable thing to do. Why are we trying to sneak things through? What's the hurry? Um, you know, I was away last week. I'm glad I was here this week. That my daughter won the science fair for uh, Carver Middle School, so for the state. So you know, she's going to save the world. I help help us save ours. Okay, and we wait. A little tired, but we're waiting. Linda Alger, 2784 Southwest 29th Avenue, 33133. And I did have a copy of this that was sent out to all the homeowners associations last week, and it didn't have this item on it. So this item apparently has been added on. I didn't know about it until I came here today for item three. I was actually very surprised to see the added item. So, notification. When was it added? Good question, huh? added when the agenda was released it's been on the agenda since it was published so it's not the one that was sent out to all the neighborhood associations Anybody else? George Simpson 3801 Thomas Avenue of course I was here for the uh, previous uh, item three and um, it seems that According to this, I didn't get any notice of this, and I went to the last holded meeting. It wasn't brought up then. You're saying that you contacted all of the associations. Uh, the fact of the matter is that now we have more properties that would be covered in this than we did previously in item three. Item three, we had three properties. This may cover a lot more, but I'm saying that I didn't know about this. As, as uh, JB is saying, the fact that we were in the lobby and it was brought to our attention is the only reason that we know anything about this. I mean, if you have properties that you might be considering, it would seem again, as we said earlier, that you would contact the property owners directly and let them know that this item was going to be coming up and what it entailed. But just now, being given this, after and you saw the people from the neighborhood. If, I don't understand why these two items wouldn't have been put together. They're concerning some of the similar and same properties. So um, I would hope that, you know, you would defer this, as has been suggested, until a later date so that people in the neighborhood involved would have a chance to even know that this exists. Thank you. Thank you. I would point out these are not properties we are considering. These are properties which may have applied for demolition, and it is for us to identify those which may be significant to the city, which we could bring to the board for individual designation. Oh, the intent is not to create yeah. historic districts. And this is something that I have actively been doing since I started in this position. Oh. And so far, I haven't brought any to the board because none have been sufficiently um, significant enough to actually bring to the board. They may have worked as part of a district, but that is not the intention of this. So a building which may be contributing, we tend to sign off in the demolition applications, but this is only for those buildings that on their own merit may actually stand up um, and meet the criteria for designation. 
Yeah, but it, 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 that still uh, begs the question that the people involved or property owners, taxpayers, uh, did not know about this. That's the point. Not how many different categories of properties that you're considering, but the fact that you should have due process and people should know right. about any serious action that relates to their properties or potentially okay. relates to their property. I, I don't want to. I don't want to speak for staff, and I've spoken too much this evening. But I just want to clarify for the record that, in its role of advising the city commission on historic preservation matters, this is a proposed regulation, a proposed ordinance that is coming to the board for its recommendation. Then, if if this were even to go forward, there would be two public hearings for any ordinance required by the city commission. And in fact, while I'm not certain, uh, as I sit here. Uh, this is the kind of regulation that might additionally go to PZAP as well because it involves an interrelationship with uh, the NCDs. So this is, I, I just want to be clear that uh, unlike the other one, this is not about any specific property right. This is a proposed regulation to amend yeah. uh, the historic code, Chapter 23. That, that, I'm, I just want to be clear on Please speak Bye. into a no, microphone. No, that's all I'm, I'm, I don't, I'm, I'm not wishing to engage in a debate or I'm not, uh, because uh, all I wanted to say is this is a proposed regulation. Uh, it, it doesn't apply to any specific properties at, at this point in time. It's, I'm, I don't know if I'm being clear. It's a proposed regulation. Mr. Chair, may I ask? Three months. We're just asking for deferral. That's it. I, they, we're going to get into a back and forth. It's late. I mean, we're not no, getting we're not into a back, into back and forth. Okay. Mr. Chair, may I ask yes, Mr. Adams Mr. a question? Yes, Mr. Campbell, please. Um, Mr. Hi, I, I'm Kathy. No, wait. One, one second. I wanna, I'm, I'm no, not going to dispute uh, it. Mr. Campbell has oh, sorry, the floor. Sorry, 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 sorry. Mr. Adams, um, is there a reason why this amendment is only considered for NCD areas and not and broader? This was how it was proposed to us. The, this amendment was actually proposed by, um, I think it was Commissioner Russell, and it was drafted through the legal department, drafted the, drafted the language. Um, I think that was how, how this came about. And so it was only specifically addressed for NCD2 and NCD3. Okay, okay. Am I correct? Would it be conceivably applicable citywide? Is there something, in other words, is there something particular about NCD 2 and 3 that, um... Yeah, that um, this was how it was presented to staff and this was what we were asked to, asked to present to the board. Could we consider this as part of the um, changes we're going to be, or, or the um, review we're going to make of Chapter 23? Um, well, you know, again, I don't, I don't want to speak too much. The board can defer it, act on it, but you've been requested for a deferral. But the fact that the board gets any item of legislation does not mean that the board has to recommend it or not recommend it as presented. You know, the board has the ability to say, we don't recommend this or we recommend this if you change it in this way or, you know. I mean, you don't, it's not, it's not like, a, to me, it's not like a give or take 100% the way something is presented. That's the board has the option to make recommendations. I don't think I ever closed public hearing, ma'am. I, I my name is Kathy Park Suarez, 4035 Battersea Road. I, I, did I hear demolitions? I, I, maybe my hearings. Yes, that's the okay. whole. That's, that's the that, whole thing. That's the whole okay, because I, I have a house in, in the West Grove that I brought the I brought an attorney to the mayor and to Commissioner Russell last month. <clears throat> We know we have a, a forged deed, um, but we have a family member that's trying to tear the house down and put another family member out in the house as a wooden house, and I have pictures. And I really could use this house to be, you know, on a hold. Um, I'm really worried about another displaced family in the West Grove. And it's a 1925 house with a grave in the backyard. And the shovel, the dig test, uh, the dig, um, the, the, the shovel test doesn't exist on Elizabeth. 
um, that's not where the boundaries are. So I'm really concerned about this house. I'm really concerned about this family. And um, Grandma wouldn't even eat from her daughter. And since we do have significant evidence, I'd like to, if I could have some help here on holding down the fort until we get the court. Courts are delayed. And um, Commissioner Russell and um, Mayor Suarez have heard from the attorney. So. I just heard demolition, and no, I didn't know about this, so I stayed because I heard, and I was walking out the door, by. Okay. Okay. Anyone else from the public wishing to speak on this item? You know, uh, excuse again. me, J.B. Diederich, once again, uh, 3758 Pro Avenue. I'm just wondering why, you know, we all have children to get to. We have things, everybody left. I don't. You want some of mine? No, thank you. You want to take care of them? No, thank I can bring them to your house. No. Or I can bring them to Mr. Uh, Commissioner Russell's no. house. I, I just implore you guys, the decisions you're taking here right now affect us profoundly. And if you're going to make a district... Uh, it's not a district. Well, it's whatever a, you guys... It's not going to be anything. It, it, it's only it, about properties that are going to be demolished. We are now shell-shocked. We yeah. are concerned that in, things are going to get snuck under the rug, yeah. under the table, I don't that think so. all these things all, are going to happen. Only things that are buildings that are about to be demolished will be reviewed. That's all this says. So, if, and we haven't decided whether we're going to. Write. I haven't decided yet. Okay. Right. Please, if you could push this back so we can, you know, it should all be included at the same time, don't you think? Would Commissioner Russell's house be involved? I can't say. I don't think it's going to be demolished. Are you? Don't, I don't know about that. I don't know. He should uh, have the same kind of rights that we have. Is there anyone else from the public wishing to speak on this item? No, no, no. Close the public hearing. Close the public hearing. Of the board for questions or comments. May I have some comments, Mr. Chairman? Go ahead, um, Mr. Friedman. Members of the public apparently do not understand what this is about. Uh, we frequently have a problem called demolition by neglect, where properties that might be worthy of historic consideration get knocked down before we realize they're getting knocked down. So what's proposed here is that we resolve by passing a resolution asking the City Commission to consider an ordinance which would enable our staff to look at properties when an application for, for demolition is proposed so they don't slip by us in case they are appropriate to be designated as historic. Uh, I think this is a very salutary measure. I think we should resolve to uh, advise the City Commission that the Board approves these interim protection measures that will serve to maintain the status quo before properties get knocked down, which might otherwise warrant preservation. Is that a motion? Uh -huh. I also discussion. agree. I also agree. But I would also like to add this the, for the Commission to consider doing this citywide and not just for NCD districts. Yes, I agree. That's my proposal. Well, if we can modify any recommendation, can we put that in it? Sure. Uh, uh. Mr. City Attorney. Is the board's desire to act on this tonight? Uh, the board could say that, uh, for example, uh, it, it does recommend the um, approval of the proposed ordinance providing, however, or with the addition that this be made effective citywide. motion so I propose a motion for the resolution of the Miami Historic Environmental Preservation Board recommending approval or approval of a proposed ordinance of the Miami City Commission incorporated herein as Exhibit A amending chapter 23 of the city code of the city of Miami as amended entitled historic preservation establishing a new section 2341 entitled interim protection measures in NCD2 and NCD3 neighborhood conservation districts in the manner and with the provision provided for and with the limitation provided herein containing a severability clause, clause and providing for an effective date with one condition that we add that the city commission consider to expand this program citywide. Second. Mr. Ryan, a second. Any discussion on the motion? Uh, yeah, discussion just procedurally. Would our 
are we resolving to have staff prepare for our review and approval a resolution that sets that forth and then be delivered to the city commission? How does it work? I prepare the resolution. Normally, uh, staff prepares the resolutions. A law may review them, and when the board recommends something to the city commission, uh, let's say something in Chapter 23 or 17, it's usually in there in the agenda packet, the backup. You know, the board recommended this. So, I mean, you could ask it to, to come back, but uh, what, what the board had said so far on what you haven't voted on is that you were recommending um, approval of this proposed regulation. You didn't change it per se, but you did say that you're approving of it, uh, but you are recommending, as I understood it, that this not just apply in NCD, that this just apply citywide. So it doesn't, need to come, doesn't need to come back to us? It doesn't need to unless you want it to. Thank you. Okay, roll call. Certainly, sir. Mr. Campbell? Yes. Mr. Ryan? Yes. And, and actually, before we proceed, uh, and I, please bear with me. So, Mr. Mr. Campbell said, with one condition, that this program be expanded citywide. Yes. I think those were your exact words. Yes. Uh, our esteemed assistant city attorney said, recommending. So, is it an approval with a condition, or is it an, an approval with a recommendation? Approval with a recommendation. recommendation. Approval with a recommendation. Okay, thank you. So let me restart the roll call, and again, thank you for indulging me. Um, Mr. Campbell? Yes. Thank you. Mr. Ryan? Yes. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Friedman? Yes. Thank you. Mr. Gonzalez? Yes. Thank you. Ms. Mattingly? Yes. Thank you. Mr. Trachtenberg? Yes. Thank you. Mr. Trigash? Yes. Thank you. And Dr. Hopper? Yes. Thank you. The motion passes 8 to 0. And that is our final item for this evening. Thank you, everyone, for your indulgence and for your patience. Um, is there anything else to come before the board? Um, we still have some more things to do with Chapter 23. We're supposed to have a task force, and we'll get on that this month. Is there a motion to adjourn? Oh, um, before we do that, shouldn't we just remind uh, those that haven't? including myself, to uh, reapply? Yes. Right. Consider yourself re reminded. I'm reminding myself? Yeah. Now is there a motion to uh, adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Nay. Okay, then you can stay. <laughs>